we can start with a prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you, Lord. We thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, that you love us. And today, you've given us this wonderful truth to learn, to study, to understand, keep in our heart forever. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, that you love us. And today you are teaching us this truth. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are always there next to us, helping us, guiding us, teaching us this truth. And Holy Spirit, you are the one who is making this teaching extremely simple and easy for us to understand it and apply it in our life, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Thank you, our Father. And we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for this wonderful day. Thank you, Jesus, that you're always there for us, helping us to study the word, to understand who you are. You're helping us to know you better. And thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross, for saving us from sin, from sickness, from death, from poverty, from lack, from, from fear, from bondage, from anger. All these things are delivered us from, Lord, by dying on the cross. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for this miracle. Help us not to for, uh, forget this truth, but help us to always remember this truth what we are learning. And we thank you and we praise you in the glorious and mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Praise Jesus. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Yesterday we were learning on Galatians 5.16. Uh, can you put that very quickly? Can you put Galatians 5.16? Galatians. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Somebody can read. Nobody? Okay, praise God. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the last of the flesh. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if, if I, you know, the last of the flesh means what I do it by myself. If I do it myself and I do not walk with the Holy Spirit, now I'm no longer operating in the Holy Spirit's work. I'm operating in my work. See the 18th verse. But if you led of the Spirit, 
you are not under the law. Praise God. If I am led by the Holy Spirit now, I am not governed by my works. That's what it's saying. I'm not governed by my own works, by the law. I'm governed by the Spirit. See? If you be led of the Spirit, if the Holy Spirit is the one who's guiding you, if the Holy Spirit is the one who's leading you, now you are not under the law. Now it is not more your works. It is not what you have done. But if you are not led by the Spirit, then you are under the law. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. And if I am under the law, means now the credit is to myself. Yes. Now, everything is of my works and not the Holy Spirit's works. Everything is of my ability. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, but if you be led of the Spirit, um, I cannot see it. Praise God. We, but if you are led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. If I'm operating in the Spirit, if I'm operating with the Word, if I'm operating with the uh, I'm operating with the Holy Spirit. No, I'm not under the law of Moses or any law. The law means. The Lord means the good things what I do. Praise God. Hallelujah. It, when I say law, it is now become my works. Now, I'm not saying you should not obey the law because Jesus gave us one big commandment. That is love. Yes? But I can only love one another if I am led of the Spirit. Because the power of the Holy Spirit is love. See, it says, under the law. Now, you know, God has given us one commandment, which is love. And if I obey that love, I'm over here, led by the Spirit. But if I, if I don't obey that commandment, now I'm under the law. The word law doesn't mean like the Ten Commandments because there are 600 plus commandments. But the law means my works, my good works. Right? Yeah, my good works. But when you talk about love, love is all about Jesus' works because Jesus loved me, I can love another person. I can love one another because Jesus said loves me first. It's like uh, I gave the example of a water tank. There's water in the water tank. It will come out of the taps and now you can uh, put it for the cooking or whatever you're doing with it. That's the same way. Out of Jesus comes the love and the love comes into us and we spread that love between others. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, the law was to show that we are a sinner. That was the Ten Commandments. If you murder, you will do this. If you kill, you will do this. You, if you do this, you will do this. That is all the Ten Commandments. But when you say you are not under the law, means you are not under the good works. You are led by the Spirit. You are led by the Spirit of God. And when you are led by the Holy Spirit, now the Holy Spirit is the one who brings mighty works. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, if I say I'm doing it by my works, it is of pride. Because now it is what I do. I'm self-conscious, self-righteous, self-dependent. Yes, I'm not God-dependent, God-dependent. But when I'm operating in love, now I'm Jesus-dependent. I'm, I'm leaning on Jesus. 
That's what happened to the prodigal son. When he went back to his father, now he cannot go back again. He cannot go away again because he has tasted the father's love. He has tasted the love of the father, how much the father loves him. And now that 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 love he will spread. He will say, even I was like you in that bit, but I, I, I discovered that you don't have to be in that bit. Because the father loves us. That is a person who's God conscious and God dependent. That is a person in the light of the spirit. But if I say, oh, you are in the pit, I'm strong. No. If you say you are in the pit, you are don't have this, you don't have that, you, you don't this, you, you don't do that, you, you don't have this, you don't have that, you don't. Then that is pride. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, it is that person which is proud of his works. And that person is proud. He is not knowing that the Holy Spirit's works are greater. That's what the scripture says, uh, Galatians 5.18. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. If I'm led by the Spirit of God, I'm not under the law because the Holy Spirit's are, works are greater. And that is what the scripture says in Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. A person in pride is destroyed for lack of knowledge because he doesn't know. He thinks his works are the best, but the Holy Spirit's works are the greatest. The Holy Spirit's works are the ones who are best. He doesn't have that knowledge. And that's why the scripture says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. How can I be God conscious when I have the knowledge? How can I be God dependent when I have the knowledge? How can I be humble? It is when I have the knowledge. But if I don't have the knowledge, I cannot do it. I cannot be God dependent, God reliant. Are you understanding? Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, you know, the Bible is the knowledge of God. Okay. And the Bible clearly says, no one is perfect. When you see the parable of forgiveness, the servant, even though he, even if he sells itself, even if he sells his uh, wife, his children, his property, everything, he cannot pay the price. That's the same way with us. We are not perfect. We are not perfect by with our works. With our works, we cannot pay the price. And that is why Jesus had to come and to pay that price. Because with my works, I am not perfect. With my works, I cannot do it. It is by the Holy Spirit's works that I am successful. That I am, no, uh, I'm perfect. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, the scripture says, okay, can you put that uh, Galatians 5.16 again? Just scroll up. Yeah. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yes? Praise God. The scripture says, first walk in the spirit. Correct? It says, first walk in the spirit. It never says, you first stop doing things of the flesh. You know, we, we misunderstand it. We think we should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We, we should become holy, and then we should walk in the spirit. And we do this because it is the lack of knowledge what we have. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, God is not asking us to do anything with our ability. God is not asking us to do anything with our strength. He's just asking us to be dependent on him. 
He's telling us to to have a relationship with Him, to trust in Him, to have faith in Him, to have a fellowship with Him. He is not asking us to do anything with our ability. Always remember that. It's God. You know. No, I don't have to put force, force, and a, an ability to believe. You know what? My task is to study the word, to understand the scriptures, to speak the promises, and to believe the whole word of God. To believe God is true. To believe that. God, if, while you know, to believe that if my if I if I don't see my situation happening at the same moment, to believe that God is not delaying, it will surely come to pass. That is my job, and when I do that, now automatically doubting will become difficult, and believing will become easy. That's why whenever you see a big man of God, he can do miracles. He doesn't. He doesn't waver in his faith. <laughs> it's because faith, be believing, became easy for him, and doubting became difficult because he continued studying the word. And that's how faith comes. Put that Romans ten seventeen. Romans. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah, whoever uh, Enoch is there, whoever is Romans 10 17. Yeah, see this. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. And that is why when I study the scriptures, when I speak the word aloud, now it, when I hear the teachings, when I do all these things, now it be, believing becomes easy because faith is b b developing in me. Faith is building up in me. And that's what the scripture says. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It doesn't say hearing and hearing testimonies. Hearing and hearing miracles. Hearing and hearing deliverance. Hearing and hearing healings. No. It says hearing, hearing the word of God. You know, it, it doesn't say uh, hearing and hearing some somebody preach. I'm not saying you shouldn't hear somebody preach. But is that person who's preaching, is he preaching according to the scripture or not? Is he preaching according to the promises of God or not? If he's not, then why do I have to believe it? I don't have to believe it. Because that is not according to the truth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, okay, I'll give an example. You know, a child. Okay, Jesus told us to become like a child, correct? Yes, in the Bible. He said, if any of you become like this child. Yes. Now, why is Jesus comparing us to a child? Why didn't he compare us to something else? An animal or something else? A child that is pure. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's because what Enoch said is also correct. It's because uh, a child's heart is always pure. Uh, pure, uh, there is nothing which is uh, nasty in a child and the child, will the child say uh, okay, Enoch, will you ever say to your mother, don't you, don't pay my school fees, I'll pay them, I'll earn and I'll pay you will no. say that? No. You will not even have that uh, strength to say that, correct? Yes. 
you will not even have that ego to say that because a child is always dependent on a on another a person a child is always dependent on the mother or father or uh, an adult a teacher or somebody he is dependent on or she is dependent on and that is why jesus is saying you have to become like a child to be dependent on your father and your father your earthly father no your heavenly father i'm not saying you shouldn't love your heavenly father earth, earthly father you should but the uh, heavenly father loves you more and he's the one who's supplying your needs he's the one who's your supplier he's the one who's your healer he's the one who's the rewarder and now we cannot see the romans 10 17 we can see the romans 10 18 just scroll up a little bit see this so then faith comes by hearing and hearing not just one hearing hearing and hearing by the word of god it is uh, by hearing you know it's not only hearing mass or hearing somebody preach or hearing the priest no i'm not you should do those things but it is just mainly hearing the word a priest a, a nun a, a, a bishop a preacher a, a pastor they all they all uh, you know you might be thinking i like to listen to this i like to listen to that but they all need to be preaching the same word of god it doesn't matter to whom you go to it matters of the word of god it matters of the promises of god whether they're preaching the right gospel or the wrong gospel you know some people just take scriptures and preach no This, the old testament says the law says you did this you have to be punished is that good news gospel be good news so when you you need punishment you need to go to hell your destiny is hell is that good news no bad news that is bad news so i need to be very careful of what gospel they are preaching the gospel should the, the gospel which they preach should be the gospel of christ the new testament the gospel what jesus has done for us praise god hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you jesus hallelujah okay now uh, um god has designed our brain correct now god has designed our brain to create a strong hold first thing first Okay, God. What is a stronghold? A Everybody has their own. Yes. A root of thoughts. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. A stronghold is a room full of thoughts. Now, usually we think it is our brain which controls our body. Correct? Yeah. Yes. And usually we think it is our brain that controls our mind. Praise God. Yes. Yes, we think, we think, okay, in the flesh. I know what I was trying to say now. No, but we think like that. Now I'll give you an example. Uh, if you have a laptop or a smartphone or anything, do you have to operate it? Yes. Operate it without operating. Will uh, okay? Will it call? I want to call this one. It will it call? I want to email this one. I will it email by itself? No. no. Unless a person operates it, when a person uses it, that is the same way with a mind. Our mind is the thing that operates our brain. Praise God! Hallelujah! Unless I change my mindset, my body will not change. That's why we say. Uh, when my mindset changes now i'm opening the tap because through our mindset now it comes into our brain and our brain is that controls our body and it will flood into the body body you know uh, it, it, if there's praise god you know if there is any cause for depression or anything any a uh, 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 problem with the brain it is because the chemical imbalance in my body and that's why the the uh, doctors give pills medicines to to 
balance that those chemicals but if i want to come out from depression you know that's how a person becomes drug addict the kind of chemical balance and after a few time they become imbalanced again that person takes the pills and again and again and now he becomes addict to the, those pills as the same way with us uh, but when we go through depression it we shouldn't we the medicine is the word which we need to have Praise God! It is our mind which controls our brain. That's why we need to change our mindset. So whatever is in our spirit can come through the mind out into the brain. And the brain is controlling the body. When it comes in the brain, automatically it will flood through the body, and that's how I come out of depression. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! Praise you, Jesus! Hallelujah! Praise God! We can do an ending prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for this wonderful, mighty, blessed, anointed, joyful day you have given us to study your word, to learn more about you, to understand you, to know you better, to to have a relationship with you, to have a fellowship with you. And Lord, we thank you for teaching us this wonderful truth of how your kingdom works. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. You are teaching us that we shouldn't operate in the law. We should operate by the work of the Holy Spirit. We should operate by the works of God. And we thank you, Lord, for teaching us this wonderful truth, making this teaching extremely simple and easy, and help us to never, ever, ever, ever forget it in our life. To always remember what you have taught us. Through your Holy Spirit, I thank you and I praise you in the glorious, mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Praise God, Hallelujah. We can pray in tongues. Sharba, 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 sharba. Everybody can unmute. Praise God, sharba, 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 sharba. Rubber <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise God. We can end today's session. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a blessed day. Bye, Shaili. Bye, Enoch. Bye. Bye.